In this video, I'd like to show you how to enable the auditing and monitoring feature of the TIPCO Jasper Report Server System. At the end of the video, the intention is to provide viewers a quick understanding of the configuration files involved in enabling the audit and monitoring feature, understand how the audit and monitoring data are being captured and stored, and also knowing where and how to run the provided reports on this captured data. The audit logging feature is only available with the commercial editions of the TIPCO Jasper Reports server. The Enterprise Edition, AWS Edition and the Professional Edition with a separate add-on purchase. It is not available with the Community Edition. For more information, please visit the TIPCO Jasper Reports Server Administration Guide, sections 9.3 to section 9.6. By default, the auditing and monitoring subsystem is turned off, but there are certain use cases why admin users would want to enable the audit locking feature. So typically, admins would want a locking mechanism to be able to track user logins, what reports were ran by which user and at what time. They also want to track events incurred from running scheduled reports. The full list of events that can be audited are listed in the tables in chapters 9.3 and 9.5 of the admin guide. These events are housed in the database tables and reports can be generated based on these captured events. If you want to verify whether you have the audit logging license enabled in your system, there's a quick way to check, which is at the Jasper Report Server login page, where you can click on the About Tipco Jasper Report Server link at the bottom left that you can check for the AUD code under the features. So now I'd like to show you quickly how to enable the audit and monitoring system on a Jasper report server. I'm using version 7.1 and I have already opened up the js.config.properties file. So if you want to enable either system, you must also, you must set this um, first property audit underscore monitoring dot enable to true and depending on whether you want one or the other or both, you set the appropriate property to Truoso. And in my case, I will set all of it to true. So I want to have both auditing and monitoring capture. Then I'll save this and I will restart the server. So we can now log on to the uh, Jasper Report server as super user with the audit and monitoring turned on. And then we'll go ahead and run a simple report. Uh, the report I'm going to run is department with employee sub report. and the report's finished. So I'll switch over to the um, Postgres query tool to query on the order tables and the monitoring tables to see what's been captured. So as you can see, the events have been uh, captured into the JI audit event. These tables were originally empty. Um, so you can see here the resource type and resource URI, um, what type of event, and also the user as well. Uh, the JI event property table stores the additional information regarding report execution and query execution and the start time and things like that. Now for the monitoring, it stores in its own table called the JI report monitoring flag. And it also logs events in here as well. So Jasper server out of the box provides audit reports that you can run in a repository. If you navigate to the public audit and Underneath the audit reports folder, you can see 
uh, ad hoc views and reports that you can run. Uh, the user activity report, and there's also the order report that um, reports on all events. So this is what it looks like for the user activity report. For the monitoring, you go to the public and go to monitoring. And there's also the monitoring reports as well. So hopefully uh, this video will give you enough information um, for you to quickly enable the audit or the monitoring feature of the Jasper Report Service System. So yeah, it looks straightforward and uh, hopefully it will give you enough information without having to go through all the detailed documents to find out how to do it. Thank you.